Hey, what's going on guys? Alex Bazookan here from Mr. Build It, and in today's video, I will show you how I built this towel rack that's disguised as a secret door to our utility room. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Let's go. The entire base of this cabinet shelf is made up of one $30 sheet of MDF. The overall height of these shelves were just a few inches shy of being eight feet tall. Now, because I needed the four by eight sheet of MDF cut the long way and space is limited in my workshop, I used my ACS track saw system from Craig to rip the large pieces down without hurting my back. And then I handled the five smaller shelves on my table saw. I assembled everything using good old fashioned wood glue and a few brad nails just to hold everything in place. I then clamped the ends for 30 minutes together just to make sure there was enough clamping pressure for the wood glue. And then reinforced all the shelves with countersunk inch and a quarter screws. Climb out of this war zone. So I learned my lesson the hard way, guys. This is big. So uh, probably you do it on the ground. Don't do it on the workbench. We're learning lessons all day long. For the back of the shelves, I decided to keep it simple and I just used a $15 piece of quarter inch plywood. A couple of reasons for it is number one, this thing weighs a ton and it definitely doesn't need any more weight. And reason number two, just in case an emergency or somebody gets locked or trapped back there, I could or they could just simply pry the quarter inch plywood off and get out. I don't know, I, I'm a dad, I have to think of things like this. No built-in shelves or cabinet for that matter is complete without a face frame. Typically the face frame is what makes a whole cabinet go from looking like a box to an actual piece of furniture. But in our situation we will be asking even more from our face frames. Our face frames will be the key players to making sure this shelving unit swings safely and securely. That is why I went with a solid wood like a 1x4 select pine. I made sure the side pieces, the styles as they are called, come out long enough at the bottom to conceal our 2 inch casters as well as tall enough at top to make small adjustments in case something is out of square. I secured all the rails, or the horizontal side pieces if you will, to the styles using the wood glue and pocket screws. So what's really great about this little Craig mini jig, uh, as you can see it creates these precise pocket holes that are going to be meant to attach the face frame to this cabinet, is for the most part I've always used my Craig Foreman right there. Very expensive, worth every penny for creating these repetitive uh, pocket holes in cabinet making. But in this position I skipped a step and I forgot to create my pocket holes for the face frame so now I have to go and create those pocket holes. Now obviously I can't bring this to that Foreman, it's just too heavy, it's too big. So I picked this up, 19 bucks guys, 19 20 dollars at your local hardware store will get the job done. It is by far one of the best tools I've had in the shop and that's probably how I got my start building. So highly recommend, go get yourself the Craig pocket hole jig. Once the face frames were built, I attached them using the pocket holes that I created earlier on the outside of the base of the cabinet. With of course plenty of wood glue or added support. I plugged off all the pocket holes using these pre-made plugs from Craig using wood glue and patched up all the screw holes as well as the brad nail holes using wood filler and sanding everything down flush using 120 grit sandpaper. So now you're probably wondering, uh, are you painting it now? No, I'm not painting it yet. What I am doing is applying the primer. Now, typically wood, especially MDF, it acts like a sponge. So as soon as you put paint on it, it just gets absorbed and you're gonna waste pints over pints of paint to actually finish it off. Plus, it actually chips after a while, so it doesn't stick as well. So, I'm gonna use a water-based primer. Um, I've used this stuff for the longest time. And I'm gonna put a couple of layers till the pores are clogged, and then tomorrow I'll start painting it. Once the primer dried, I used a paintable caulk to finish off all the joints on the inside of the cabinet. This will conceal any small gaps, making the shelving cabinet look like one single piece. The hidden hinges come with an easy to follow template, which requires a center punch to mark out where you would use a drill bit to bore out the four holes inside the face frame with specific depths. Then using a palm router or a sharp chisel to remove the additional markings. I used three hinges on this project as recommended by a friend who's done a similar thing before. And the weight is not really a problem since the majority of the cabinet's weight will also be supported on casters. Once the three hinge slots were cut out, I cut out another three matching slots on a one by two piece of pine for attaching to the studs of the wall. Every project has its own set of hiccups and issues, so let me show you what happened later in the build and the issue that I had. Well folks, uh, you're not building if you aren't making a few mistakes. So in this situation, this door, as you can see, I had to narrow it down a little bit, down to about eight inches or so. Reason why is I was a little too optimistic. I made it 14 inches and the dummy myself, I didn't even think about it. Uh, 
if it's 14 inches deep, there's no way this thing can swing open. In fact, it only like opened up by like three inches or so. So by cutting it down to uh, eight inches, it swings open just perfectly. So right now I'm just gonna go caulk the rest of these uh, joints inside smoothly, sand it a little bit, and then we're gonna throw some paint and then we're gonna start doing the install. Now for paint, I'm using the same latex paint we used on our trim pieces and baseboards in our home. It took me about three coats at most to finish off the shelving unit. Basically ended up using the entire quart of paint I purchased for this project. For installation, I first traced out the 1x3 piece that would attach the cabinet to the studs of the wall with all the hinges. Then, I cut out all the drywall to expose the studs. I secured the hinges using the provided screws. Once everything was lined up and moving properly, I brought everything to the wall and secured the shelving unit to the wall studs using 3-inch screws. Now this goes without saying, but it's a good idea to pre-drill and countersink all the holes so that you don't split the one by two piece of wood as you're driving everything into the wall studs. So I got this additional trim piece attached to kind of contour to the shape of this wall that's off about an eighth up to bottom. Um, 2020 hindsight, if I was to redo this project, I would give myself a little bit more room here to allow for the depth of the cabinet to come out. And so that's why I couldn't do anything about it. So this solved this problem. It worked just fine. Now the only thing left I have to conceal is the very top piece. So I took a piece of MDF and it's already primed through a few pocket holes in there. And then I'm just gonna attach it to the sides and to the ceiling and it'll be ready for caulking. Now, just like any other project, there's a lot of lessons I learned on this one. If I was to build this project again, the next time I would perhaps build a door frame first. That way I could use shims to square up and line up any of the imperfections that were there probably from framing gaps. This would perhaps make, uh, you know, finished work go a lot smoother. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you're brand new to the channel and you like projects like this or this standing shower that I built recently, which the video is gonna be coming out soon, make sure you hit the subscribe button right over there. Tap that notification bell, that way you'll be alerted every time a video comes out. Like, comment, and share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, I'll put links down in the description below. Tune in this week, we'll see you guys next week. See ya, bye.